Hello and welcome to Bradio Software Development. My name is Brad and today we're going to be talking about IPFS support in a browser called Brave. So if I switch my screen as I normally start these videos off with, uh, you will see here that I'm on the Brave website. Now, if nobody's heard of Brave before and you're a web developer or website designer, then blasphemy, you must know about Brave. Uh, Brave is essentially just uh, like Google Chrome, well, exactly the same as Google Chrome. It runs on the Chromium engine. The only addition is that it's faster. Uh, it doesn't support uh, cross-site scripting um, exchanges, so and it has no fingerprints either. So, uh, well, it hides fingerprints. So, you don't have to worry about going on Facebook and then going on another, on another site and having that data uh, uh, crossover through sessions. All the sessions related to one page are pretty much locked into that one domain, which is really cool. Um, so as you can see here, it loads faster. So you can also sync everything, like your bookmarks, between different uh, Brave uh, installations. So like on your Mac or on your PC or on your phone, you can sync them all together and it uses like a, like a keychain. So uh, I don't know if you've ever done this before, but on WhatsApp, you get like a QR code. You can scan the QR code on the browser and then it allows you to use uh, the browser to send messages and receive messages. And that's exactly the same way that the sync works. It creates a, a keychain that you can use between different uh, devices. Um, and it also just gives you really, really good security, really good privacy. Um, and you get all the benefits of Chrome without all the Google stuff. So it's really cool. They've also got something else called Brave Rewards. I've never really looked into it too much, but um, because Brave is an anti-advert platform, because they don't want ads being shown anywhere, they allow uh, creators to sign up for Brave Rewards. So like, if you want to support websites that you like, you can use the Brave Rewards to do that, which is pretty cool. So enough about Brave. Um, but if we look at the bottom here, we can see it says IPF integration. Now, I'm going to go to the blog article that came out yesterday. It's currently the 20th of January today and 19th of January was yesterday. So if we scroll down here, we can see that Brave now supports the IPFS protocol or the IPFS URI, as it says there. And it look, kind of looks like an onion link um, without the dot onion bit. And as far as I understand, it doesn't use any kind of VPN. So um, you use the uh, URL and it's all, all stored on the blockchain. We're gonna talk about that in a minute. And you literally go to, a, you open up your browser, you put in the URI, you put in the code that someone gives you, or it might be somewhere on a website uh, that's linked, and you click it and it just automatically opens, just like a normal website. I'm, I'm assuming you can run server-side applications on it because um, literally it's just it's just another website. So uh, with like say PHP, for example, you go onto it and there's a GET request and it will just load, it will just serve you what's in the GET request. And then it must support things like post, so you can submit forms. Therefore, it must support server-side scripting to some extent. So we're going to look into that in a future video because I'm really interested in this and I really like the sound of it. So I'm going to actually do a series on how to spin up your own website on the IPFS protocol. So that'll be very interesting. Um, I need to stop pointing my finger because I'm really excited about this. That's why I'm um, kind of shaking my hands around a little bit. So um, the IPFS protocol works on the blockchain. And if nobody knows about blockchain, which I don't know what world you're living in, but you should know a little bit about, uh, about it. So there's essentially a ledger. Um, every user in the world has a wallet. And when they trade a currency, uh, everybody gets told about the transaction. Uh, then somebody then basically confirms the transaction. They get paid for it because it requires like a crypto, um, a cryptographic calculation, a mathematical uh, calculation. And then uh, that's how currency gets shifted around on the blockchain. And the idea of blockchains with things like this, where you have like a, a central storage system, is when you buy the crypto or when you run the server to host the files, you get a piece, you get a reward. So when you host files, you get a reward. And that's essentially how this works. Well, it's essentially how another blockchain uh, used to work. And that is called SEER. So I haven't heard of... I haven't... Um, I haven't followed CR for many, many years. I think I first learned about it in 2013 and I tried spinning up a, a CR coin server um, and it seems to run pretty okay back then. I'm not sure where it's at now, whether it even still exists. It looks like it's all going well, but this was like the first um, implementation that I knew of that supported uh, cloud storage. So essentially like Google Drive, but everybody owned a bit of the action. You got paid for hosting the files, depending on how much you hosted. And then you would have to pay in order to store files or transfer files over the network. 
So that was pretty cool. I'm assuming IPFS is just a minified version of this, but faster. It's going to have to be because it's going to be transmitting smaller files over the web. So I think that's how it works. Don't quote me on that, but I'm going to look more into it and I'm going to do a series. And another thing that I've just thought of is um, this is actually going to be far, far safer um, than using Tor because even though Tor is on the Onion network so you can't be traced, the it looks like the IPFS network, um, you bring up a website and it can just stay there and nobody can bring it down because it's on the blockchain. So that means that... Um, say there's a website they don't have to fear somebody coming and taking the server because everybody owns a piece of that server not very good for the illegal side of things but very 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 good for the censorship side of things because that means that nobody can be deplatformed awesome so yeah that's essentially the news brave is um supporting decentralized a decentralized world um anti-censorship all that kind of stuff all that good stuff that i love um so it's very very interesting and i wanted to tell people about it and um hopefully you'll go ahead and download brave now because um it's getting like the wild wild west days again and i like it i remember like back 10 15 years ago um every everyone could just go on the web go into like little private chat forums and just type stuff with no fear of it being tracked or recorded and you can delete a website and there was no such things like gdpr or um, I've forgotten what the other one was the Data Protection Act, the one that kind of disappeared uh, there was no such thing as that it was like proper Wild Wild West and now it's doing it again and I'm really looking forward to seeing where this goes because I think the internet needs to be like this in order for it to survive because as soon as you start censor censoring the internet nobody's going to use it uh, everyone's going to be very worried about what they go on they're going to be using like um, uh, they're going to be when people are worried about using something um that's a that's a really slippery slope so um that's pretty much all i've got to say about uh brave today but uh, i'd like to thank you for watching my video remember to like comment and subscribe and i'll see you in future videos where i'm going to be talking about a new social media which has which is decentralized and also i'm going to be talking more about this uh, ipfs protocol and we're going to be messing around with it and trying to spin up some websites so again thanks for watching and i'll catch you next time